Hi there, folks. This is Carlos Del Hunco at HarmonicaPractice.com, and I'm here to talk about a series of videos that I'm going to be doing about the art of uh, transcribing to memory. Um, and I'm really excited to share this with you guys because um, I think I've hit on something that's a, a really cool way to learn and much easier than a lot of people think. Um, I have a lot of my students who say, man, my memory's terrible. I can't transcribe things to memory. Um, and then once I show them how to uh, go about this, um, they're, they're psyched and they go, wow, it's a lot easier than I thought. Um, so uh, this first video is just going to get into uh, the ins and outs of the, the window, um, the basic window we're going to open up here, the transcribe window, um, the basic functionality that you have on the actual visible window. All right, so we're going to open up a song here for playback and show you a few things. Um, here's my version of uh, Muddy Waters classic. Um, this is what it's going to look like. Um, by default, it's going to show you two wave spectrums. This is what a wave spectrum looks like of audio. Um, and you see this little red triangle here. Uh, it shows you where your playback position is. I can move the playback start point anywhere. When I hit the space bar, it acts both as play and stop. So play. And then I hit the space bar again, and it stops. And you get I can go anywhere in the song. So a basic made, I'm just going to show you the basic things of what you need to know to uh, uh, you know, make your transcribing as easy and as efficient as possible. Um, and so number one, if you're lazy about using key commands, and I'm going to show you in another video why you should get into key commands, that they're, that way you're just into the music and, and you're not moving your mouse all over the place. And, um, you'll see. Uh, but here are basic functionalities on this window. So playback, slow it down, or you can change the pitch on this one right here. Going up one semitone, two semitones, three semitones. So if you only had one key of harmonica, for instance, if you only had a C and this song was in a different key, you could sort of figure out what key you need to put it in so that you could practice with your, your C harmonica. Put that back where it is. And then this thing over here um, uh, expands the view. And now we're in, in uber detail. Um, and you can actually see that, you know, the hits of the, the instruments and the guitar, bass, drums, in sometimes depending on the way the audio is recorded and how compressed it is, you can start to see what's going on. And this comes in handy, you'll see, as we get into transcribing when you get into it like an expanded view. Uh, this, um, this little thing is just for volume, some MP3, some audio is, is uber quiet. So you want to you make it louder. You can just make it louder with this one. This is a thing called a loop function. And, and if you want to make a little loop of... So it keeps repeating it. Um, uh, keep that off by default. When you're in an expanded view, um, and I want, and I'm hitting playback, this thing will cycle the window. Once it gets to the midpoint, the play cursor gets to the midpoint. I find that very distracting, so I always leave that off. Um, the other thing you can do is there's an effects window you can open up, and the main feature um, of the effects window that will be useful um, are a couple of things. One is the EQ. You can drag with your mouse. So you can, you know, maybe cut out a bit if there's a bit too much bass. Um, oh, and you can hear the difference in sound if if I hit bypass. Keep on here on. It it's a, it, it really just just depends on the audio. Um, so that's one thing you can do, and you can um, you can create user settings so if i wanted to save that for instance i would just hit save and type in a title and it'll save it in a folder for you and then it'll um it'll appear in uh in this little list right here the other thing that's um that you're going to want to use in this effects window is the tuning um the make it active um 
you have some of those old chess recordings are micro tuned in between their uh the tape speed was not kind of running at the right speed so you can micro tune it this way here just using your ears uh in between the semitones that you could normally do here um that i was showing you on right here by raising or lowering the pitch um but this this particular feature comes in handy when you when you open up this window the other thing I want to show you is this. Um, you've got this uh, little keyboard. If you put your mouse over the, if it's not visible, you can uh, make it visible here. And if you want to practice your bent notes with a harmonica, the best way to do that is with an audio source, not some visual aid like bendometer. That's just not a good idea. You want to use your ears because this is ear training um, and resonate with the, the same frequency you hear. So here, for instance, uh, if I pick up my C harmonica, I'm playing my G hold number two draw. There it is. And if I want to play, practice my middle bend number three, for instance, there it is. Nice pure sine wave, so it's easy to hear. I'm purposely playing out of tune so you can hear. And you can really hear the slight fluctuations if you're slightly out of pitch. It's a great way to, to practice your bends. Um, so that's that. And then the other thing that you want to do is go into your preferences. So when, once we get into the transcribing, um, these little things are going to come in super handy. So just uh, by default, you want to always display your waveform in mono um, in the general window. That's this box right here. Playback. There's a little thing about rewind. Set it to about five tenths of a second. It comes in handy. You'll see why as we get into it. Um, or you can just set it up as you see in my window. Um, markers um, by default, I think, are like this. You want to set no letter, nothing, and no. And then press OK so that it saves all these features. Now it's in mono. Again, the less clutter you have on your desktop uh, in the window, the easier it is. Uh, to function, to focus on what you want to focus on. And the last few things um, I want to show you are just creating some basic markers. If I go back into the, this view, um, I did that with a quick key command, and I'm going to get into that in, I think, video number three, and I'll show you some key commands that I use and uh, that are super handy. But if I create some markers... Um, We're going you... Playing back, and then so I've just created four markers along this audio file. I'll get again more into detail about how to do this as we go, but just to show you something here that's kind of handy if we go into view and we go show timeline, there it's now showing the timeline of whatever view you have of the audio spectrum. In other words, if I expand the view. To go into detail, it expands the view of the timeline. And you'll see why this comes in super handy as we get into transcribing. And the other thing that you want to do is, that's also super handy, is go to the navigation bar and go show. So now it's showing you the whole timeline of the whole song on the bottom, the expanded view of the timeline on the top. And the reason this is handy, I've just created these blue section markers. I can quickly click on the bottom and you can see that instead of dragging this uh, to, to change your view, which is one thing you can do, you can just click on that view there to go to, let's say, the beginning of a new verse and etc. So that's the other thing that you can do. So leave your, your preferences and what I just did up here in your view uh, in those um, setups. And one other thing that's pretty cool that this can do um, is... Depending on the audio source and the, the complexity of the audio information that you're listening to, um, you you sometimes are able to grab a note and figure out what it is by highlighting just the detail of the note. Let's 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 say we go into um, I don't know. That's too much information there. So, so there's a here's a note. What's that note there? You can hear, you can see the note. 
So I can literally just grab that note. You can see it. Because the audio spectrum is just drums and harmonica, chances are that's the note I'm playing. I go view, um, show spectrum. And now it's going to take a guess and it's taken, it's showing the keyboard and then a spike, which note it thinks that it is. And, and that sounds pretty good to me. So um, I'm playing an E harmonica. I beg your pardon, I'm playing an A harmonica in the key of E. And I'm playing, and I'm playing, uh, Mm, whatever, that's a G on my A harmonica, so that's the first hole, bend number three, with a slight bend. And playback. If I want a continuous playback on it, which is kind of obnoxious, but I can hear it. Um, so that's what Transcribe does in a nutshell. Um, and these are the most important features that I've shown you and how it functions and things that you'll need to know as we get into uh, um, there's a lot more things that it does um, but uh, this is what you need to know to get into transcribing really um, the rest are more just details and key commands and stuff and I'm going to get into some of that uh, in uh, I think video number three so video number two we're going to get into the details of setting up markers accurately to to lay them out properly so that you can get into the beginning of transcribing um, and taking the time to do it well and you'll see why again every little bit helps when you're committing this stuff to memory all right again this is carlos del Hunco at harmonicapractice.com and i look forward to uh sharing the gospel according to the harmonica according to the way i see it uh, in the next video see you soon